Oh, I think I'm standing on frozen ice on top of this flowing river. How crazy is that?
Welcome back. That was Mount Avalon. Another 52 with a view in the books. Mount Avalon is of course on the 52 Aww. with the view and the height of this mountain was 3,461 feet and the trail was an out and back trail that we followed for around 3.3 miles total. To get to the summit of Mount Avalon, we start this trail off basically identical to how we started Mount Willard by crossing the train tracks and following the trail to start. But this time at the bulletin board, instead of going to the left as we did go to Mount Willard, you go straight on towards Mount Avalon. Now the trail to Mount Avalon Avalon is very flat to start and it only starts to get a little bit steeper after we make our first of several stream crossings. We'll cross several more along the way, but after this first stream crossing, it begins to have a little bit of an elevation, but nothing too serious. Uh, now to be clear, several of these stream crossings are of different sizes and flows, and that probably also changes throughout the year. As I went during the winter, there was a lot more snow runoff and other melt water that could be filling these streams, but there, there was only one or two that were large stream crossings and they offered no real issue, but uh, it could vary throughout the time of the year. Now after that incline, after the first stream crossing, the trail does begin to flatten out a little bit and you can kind of see the summit of Mount Avalon through the trees. At least I hope that's Mount Avalon. <laughs> that would be embarrassing if it wasn't. But you continue on a little bit until you hit one of the larger stream crossings that you find along the trail. But at this large stream crossing, the trail does get steeper and the incline increases and maintains this constant incline until we reach the trail fork uh, where we can take the trail off to Mount Tom and then the other trail to the summit of Mount Avalon. And it's once we reach this trail fork that we of course are gonna take the trail to the left and go off the last 0.5 miles to the summit of Mount Avalon. Now, let me be clear, it is this last 0.5 miles that is the steepest portion of this entire trail. It is quite a bit of scrambling. It was a little bit difficult to do in the winter. It is just so steep. So snowy, so icy. My spikes are pretty mediocre. But we're heading down, slowly but surely. Oh, oh. 
I'm sure this would be so much easier. A, if I had poles. But B, if it was not winter. I wonder what it would be like. For all I know, there could be a nice little stone staircase. But this is difficult. Uh, 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 uh. <sighs> that last 0.5 miles has a good majority of the elevation compared to what we had seen, and you gotta scramble up really quickly. After we make it up, this very steep portion does level out for a little bit, and there's, there was a lot of, what is it? I saw a lot of woodpeckers there, which was rather strange to me because like, I've, I've only maybe seen one woodpecker time. There was like five or six, it was a freaking flock of woodpeckers. It's very strange. Uh, but once you meet the rest of this part of the trail, there's one last trail fork that takes you off to the rest of the Crawford Notch range, and off to the left, we do the last hundred yards up to the summit of Mount Avalon. Once you take this fork, there is one last huge scramble up to the top. And then once you're there though, you're treated to the most amazing view from the top of Mount Avalon. This view consists of the top of Crawford Notch. You can see across one of the sides. You can't see the full V like we could from Mount Willard, but you can see upper sides of Crawford Notch as well as the day that I went, I had a perfect view, perfect clearness to see the entirety of Mount Washington, which was really quite spectacular. Oh, also to note, if once you're done taking in those amazing views to the front, if you turn back around, you can see Mount Tom rising directly behind you. If you are intrigued and feel like you wanna go check out Mount Avalon yourself, of course, I've linked a custom all trails map in that description down below, as well as all the gear that I used to make this video possible. All right, for trail notes, the trail is blazed with yellow blazes. They're very easy to spot. They're rather consistent along the length of the trail, but at the same time, the trail is rather straight and well-worn, so it's not that hard to follow. So I never really found this much of an issue, especially even during the winter when I went, I'm sure it's even easier during the summer. When it comes to the busyness of the trail, I would say it's a lot less busy than Mount Willard is, but what makes this one interesting is not that there's necessarily that many people hiking to the summit of Mount Avalon. What makes this one as busy as it is, is just because the trail overlaps with trails going to the summit of several other mountains in the area that people like to hike, such as Mount Tom and the Wiley Range that are part of the New Hampshire 48 hiking list. So if you see people on the trail, it's maybe because they're using the Avalon Trail that you're using to get to those peaks and not necessarily the one that you're trying to get to. When it comes to Mount Avalon's difficulty ranking, I would put it squarely in my road less traveled. Definitely so because it is winter time. I, that's what makes it, these difficulty rankings so weird. I don't know if I would downgrade it to off the beaten path if it was the summertime, but I, I would say that even during the summertime, that last half mile scramble to the top is pretty steep and a little bit out of the ordinary. So I would I would say definitely a road less traveled, especially during the winter time. I do find it more difficult than Mount Willard, which is right nearby. When it comes to the trail recommendation, yes, I think I'd recommend this trail. It has a pretty good view. It gets that great view of Mount Washington, which Mount Willard does not get. It's only 3.3 miles, so it's not that far and it is not too steep in our technical comparison compared to some of the other ones that I did. But it does get, I guess you could call it 360 degree views all the way around. Yeah, I, I think I'd recommend it. It is located near a few other trails so you can easily hit it up while you're doing some of the other mountain ranges along the way. But as you know, that's just my opinion. What did you guys think? Let me know what you thought of this trail in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions of other 52 with a view hikes that I should do, if or hey, Adam, I, you should have gone and done Mount Tom at the same time. Let me know those opinions down below. In the end though, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Be sure to hit that bell to turn on notifications so that you never miss another one of my videos or uploads. I got nothing else. That's it for me. I'll catch you in the next one. Don't buy your micro spikes off Amazon. These are absolute crap. Walking on a frozen river. Mount Avalon. At least, at least I hope that's the peak. I'd look real stupid if it was. I just can't describe how invigorating this is. No matter how crappy I feel before I get on the trail, once I get out amongst this, it all just kind of melts away and I have an amazing time. Do you know how unhappy it makes me having to redo these steep portions up and down? <sighs> <laughs> Macarena, oh gosh. Yeah.